China has just become the world's biggest car exporter. With a fast-expanding electric vehicle industry, the country is overtaking traditional auto powers in the global market share. But not all people go gently with that new reality. Raise our concerns about China's imbalances and overcapacity. Therefore, I have encouraged the Chinese government to address these structural overcapacities. Overcapacity. This war has been the latest focus of China anxiety. China's overcapacity. Washington claims that China has been flooding the global market with heavily subsidized clean energy products like EVs amid sagging domestic demand. And that the United States will not accept this industry is being decimated by artificially cheap imports from China. But is that really the case? Today, we're going to examine this overcapacity story with facts and see the real issue behind this latest friction point between the world's two biggest economies. First, we need to do a deep dive into some of the key arguments behind the alleged spillover caused by China's green products. Now we see excess capacity building in new industries like solar, EVs, and lithium-ion batteries. Has China sold too many EVs overseas? This is China's total EV sales for 2023, and this is how many of them sold overseas. As we can see, an overwhelmingly large portion was purchased by domestic buyers, as China alone accounts for 60% of the global EV demand. To put in perspective, three quarters of German cars and around half of Japanese cars were shipped to the overseas market over the same time span. If anything, China has been inflicted with overcapacity from abroad, not inflicting it on others. And when the global market is flooded by artificially cheap Chinese products, are Chinese EVs really artificially cheap? Ironically, Chinese EVs bound for foreign buyers are actually artificially expensive. That's right. Their prices in the foreign market are sometimes twice as high as the same models at home. Partly because they had to tune it down involuntarily for their local counterparts in order not to appear aggressive or invite unwanted attentions. Take BYD as an example which is now China's and the world's biggest EV maker. Its latest generation of Auto 3 hovers around 40,000 euros in Europe. The pricing is in the same league as the likes of Volkswagens and Tesla's models. It is the quality that matters now, not price. We think uh, China is massively subsidizing investment in a set of industries. Is China still subsidizing its EV industry? Actually, China substantially cut back on the purchase incentives for EVs by the end of 2022. It is Washington that is now doing exactly what accuses Beijing of doing. The US Inflation Reduction Act has offered a 7,500 US dollars tax credit for Americans who buy a new locally assembled EV. But that didn't fare too well. Last year, the American auto giant Ford reportedly lost a whopping 64,000 US dollars for every EV sold. At the current stage of the business, subsidy is no longer a panacea for inadequate competitiveness. So the people who pitch the overcapacity narrative don't really get their facts straight. But the question remains if not for the predatory pricing, then how did the Chinese auto industry pull off a giant leap over the past decade and take away the lion's share of the global EV market? Here's an interview of Elon Musk in 2011. And when asked about Chinese EV companies, this was the Tesla's owner's reaction. Uh, why do you laugh? Really is. Why do you laugh? Have you seen their car? You don't see them at all as a competitor? No. I, I think they, th their focus is and rightly should be on making sure they don't die in China. Over a decade later today, however, the Chinese car companies are the most competitive car companies in the world. So I think they will have significant success um, outside of China. They're extremely good. Once Musk's laughingstock, China's BYD now becomes Tesla's major battery supplier. In Tesla's Berlin factory, the Model Y vehicles equipped with the Made in China Blade batteries 
a rolling off the production line. It demonstrates the ascendance of Chinese EV companies' technological prowess. One of the technological breakthroughs was made in 2020, when BYD dramatically raised the energy density of its own model of lithium cells. It sent shockwaves throughout the world's battery-making business. Not long after that, BYD dethroned Tesla as the world's biggest EV manufacturer. Although many people still like to stick to the cautionary tale of cheap, low-quality Chinese products swarming the global market, it's simply not what is happening. Chinese EV makers are gaining ground not by overcharging their industrial capacity, but by making best of their innovation capacity. China's comparative advantage is shifting in the global system. As China's vast population starts to age, and the cost of all factors of production rises, the best way, or probably the only way to maintain economic growth, is to boost its technological innovation. And that is why the world's second biggest economy initiated the latest drive of new quality productive forces. The ironclad logic behind this move is simple. Technological advances make products competitive. And the EV is just a start. Washington officials couldn't wrap their heads around it, or they simply refused to do so. Their relentless hyping of Chinese EV's overcapacity is only to fabricate a context for the upcoming buildup of trade barriers. Only a month after Mrs. Yellen propagated this theory during her China tour, a 100% tariff on electric vehicles made in China, people say, wow. Sanctions and tariffs have almost been Washington's go-to response to anything Chinese lately. But sadly, it is not likely to pan out this time, especially in areas where China maintains the technological edge. Ever since 2011, Washington imposed three rounds of anti-dumping tariffs on Chinese solar panels, but each time less effective than the last. Because China had already become a world leader in the photovoltaic technology. Today's story about EVs just sounds all too familiar. China's EV industry is booming, not because it develops its own products with its door closed, but because the country goes against the protectionist instinct that now bewitches Washington. Beijing gave the green light to Tesla's Shanghai Gigafactory with unprecedented concessions on land procurement and foreign capital's shareholding ratio. As it turned out, the introduction of the world's top EV maker helped incentivize China's domestic innovation in the sector and precipitate the building of a wholesale supply chain. The cooperation worked so well that out of the entire Chinese EV exports, which Mrs. Yellen described as excess capacity, Tesla models made in Shanghai took up 20%. The made-up story about China's overcapacity won't go very far, neither with a tear frenzy that comes after. Shut the door to the world's most competitive EV technologies and products, it will only be harder for American companies to close the gap. It is a fair game now, and intuitive to build a small yard on high fence is not likely to change this fact.